It's almost one in the morning. I was listening to Coast to Coast. Yeah. Actually, I aged 20 minutes in a second. No. no. Anyway, I'll continue. This is part three to my introduction to uh, the last book I wrote, which will probably not be able to go into it because uh, apparently um, Amazon has uh, put a block on me. Uh, not only is it hiding my books, I mean, really, if you type in Ramit Ramsey into Amazon, you're not going to see it. Uh, if you type in Mutania, M U T I. Uh, M-U-T-A-I-N-I-A Wars You have to type in Wars too. Then it opens the door to my books Other than that you can't find me They are hiding me Because I expose Islam Simple as that But anyway Oh uh, this is This 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 is this camera is about ready to die So I uh, I mean the battery is So I'll try to finish this up here Okay Although my, gray, although my gay friend was incredibly strong and could have easily kicked this uh, future medical doctor's ass, uh, uh, but all he did was stand and watch as not only the boy uh, attacked me, but, but, but the boy's younger brother as well. Uh, that doesn't, that's, bad, that's bad writing. Although my gay friend was incredibly strong and could have easily kicked this uh, future medical doctor's ass, all he did was... Uh, see, I need to get rid of that butt. That butt always... Uh, the butt that screws things up. And ass, comma. All he did was stand and watch as uh, not only the boy attacked me, but the boy's younger brother as well. So again, I really don't think he liked me, but to write science fiction with. Yeah, but to write science fiction with, yeah. The only thing that got those guys off of me was then, uh, off of me was when, not was then, but was, was when, not when was then, oh my gosh. What's the matter with me? Um, uh, was when um, they, <laughs> I'm sorry, was when they, I, I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know my uh, reading was going to be so bad. I mean, my writing was going to be so bad. Okay, I'll continue here. Uh, the only thing that got those guys off me was when they saw car lights coming at them from down this hill, proving to me that they knew what they were doing to me was wrong. I was about 12 at the time and grotesquely skinny from trying to avoid white sugar when white sugar seemed to be in just about everything back then. It was probably a good thing that I didn't hurt them and my friend didn't pull them off of me because they were full-blooded Sicilian. I guess you could say I was being attacked by the Mafia. It was also probably a good thing my friend didn't uh, make a pass at me for I wasn't a Christian at the time when he knew me and really uh, didn't yeah, I passed at me at the time when he knew me and uh, really didn't see and, and I and I really didn't see anything wrong with being fondled and vice versa if it came to that, I was a Mormon 
and homosexuality seemed common in such a cult. As a matter of fact, one of my Mormon cousins was gay and had me, my brother, and his brother playing Twister in our underwear when I was eight and about to get locked in the temple. It's actually called Sealed in the Temple. It's a Mormon thing. Which took place in Oakland, California. My brother remembers us playing Twister in our underwear and he's younger than me. And I don't remember playing Twister in my underwear. If I do remember it, it was only because he reminded me of it. In other words, it could be a false memory. For one thing, sex was not on my mind back then, as you will discover should you read further in this book. I mean, really, it wasn't on my mind. To me, my penis was something not to sexually play with, but to use as a monster little plastic toy army men would shoot at. And I have no memory of the penis monster growing big and scary to challenge the toy soldiers as they shot at it in such a in such play in such playtime. But I did have a sex drive. Although I didn't sexually fantasize having intercourse with them, I did sexually fantasize about the girls in my life since I was age five. In such fantasies, though, it was very much science fiction where we were exposed to magical potions that would uh, grow us up naked, and of course, into uh, the ripe old age of 16. And no further than that. We then shrink back to normal age. Uh, we would then sh uh, shrink back to other ages we were through orgasm. If you read this book, there is a lot of things going back to normal and not changing. I was very much into playing with uh, things, but uh, making it go back the way it was before I played with them. And I think this book captures that notion very well. Things, you, things just go back to normal, as if I never played with them. Anyway, during the time I was writing the following stories that become a part of this book, I fantasized a lot about this really pretty blonde girl named Tracy, who um, stripped naked in front of me and my brother and her brother when I was eight. They ran screaming out of that tree house in front of me. Now, uh, 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 that tree house, which was actually located on, on the ground. It was more like boards and stuff laying against a tree. And when she stripped in front of me, I did so as well. But if they had not done that, would I have done that as well? What I've done that what I've done that also. I, I, I only saw a couple of seconds of her in my eight year old mind, but she became burned into my brain and became one of the girls I fantasized about for the longest time. A girl who would grow up to sixteen with me using those magical fantasy potions. You'd think I would have written about her in some of the stories that make it into this book, since her flawless young female physique made such an uh, impression on me, but I saw that as private. And if the teacher thought it was a no-no to say one of my rocks hit my teddy bear in the rear, you know that would not have made it into this collection at all. Speaking of rocks, there was another girl I was very much attracted to at the time who looked like a, a young Angela Cartwright from Lost in Space. But I blew, blew it badly with her when I was trying to throw rocks over a telephone wire 
and after launching one, saw the rock coming down toward where she was walking, I cringed to, I, 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 I cringed in horror. I yelled out, Watch out! <laughs> I hit her on the head, right on the head, causing her to scream and cry to her family with me doing the same as I followed quickly after her, desperately telling her how sorry I was. All I wanted to do was tell her how sorry and horrible I felt for such a mindless thing to do to such a human angel. And she was a human angel. Big, dark-eyed big pretty dark eyes just as pretty perhaps more so than Angela Cartwright was before she transformed into someone totally unrecognizable and I did tell her she became very popular in school and uh, was very smart as well as beautiful the kind of girl a guy like me dreams of marrying Beauty and brains. That's my kind of girl. I love pretty and smart girls. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah, the kind of girl, like me, dreams of marrying. And every time I saw her, or whenever her eyes met, our eyes met, I looked down for I could never face the shame I accidentally caused between us with that one stupid move with a rock. Such an, ex such an incident didn't make it into the coming collection of stories of this book because it was something I wanted to desperately forget. But hey, she did make it into my fantasies, but not as much as Tracy, the girl that stripped in front of me. Oh, back to the gay boy. The last time I saw him was in a, a pic, was a was in a picture in Facebook. I messaged him saying, "I used to know someone with your name and looks," but he never responded back, and instead. His Facebook account was later deleted by him. I don't know the picture of him um, that was deleted along with his Facebook account was of him 